For me, it's about the law and people. I just need facts, okay? Yeah, okay? Just facts. And how people can resolve their problems and just be better for it. Justice with passion. I always knew I was going to go into law because I tried to see everybody's point of view in an argument. And I encouraged people to talk to each other to try to resolve their problems. Justice with truth. Do not waste your time and do not waste mine. This is Justice for All with Judge Christina Perez. Sherry Salazar is suing Carmen Salazar in the amount of $2,000. Ms. Salazar claims she loaned her mother money to help with rent over two years ago and says she still hasn't gotten a dime of it back. Okay, Ms. Salazar, I understand you are here today suing your mother for $2,000. Yes, I am, Your Honor. Okay, did you have an agreement with your mother? Yes, so I initially gave her the $2,000 to help her with rent. Gave or loaned her? I loaned it to her, yes. I loaned it to her to help her with rent, and she verbally told me back that she was going to pay me back in April. Okay. And then this was so all... So why did your mother ask for $2,000 for rent? She was saying that she was behind on rent because of the holiday season, which is understandable. However, she did say she was going to pay me back in full. Okay. Do you live with your mom? I do currently. Okay. And do you pay rent? I do pay a lot of utilities as well as all of my own personal okay. finances. And how yeah. old are you? 19. And what about food? Do you contribute food? Food-wise, I do work as a fast food worker, so a lot of time I am already working there, so I just eat there. So okay. it's not like I'm eating a lot at her house. Okay. At, at your house or, you, or her house? Uh, it's still her house. You know, like I live there, but it's still her house, so okay. at her house, All right. yeah. And um, Miss, Mrs. Salazar, did you request that your daughter, once she turned 18, start helping you in, at home? I asked her to start contributing in the household. Yes, I did. Okay. And what did you want her to contribute? Just in the electric and the water or? Anything that she could possibly contribute to, I was grateful for. Mm -hmm. um, I pay for everything. So okay. anything that I can get from my daughter. It's a good example for her brother as well to have her help okay, so out. So you have house. two children? I yes. have two kids. Okay. Sherry and your son. How old yes. is your son? My son is seven. Seven. Okay. And do you work full time? I have two part time jobs. So does it help that uh, Sherry pays for the electric and the water? It is a little helpful that she pays for the electric and the okay. water. Have you asked her to pay for more? I have asked her to contribute to the household a little bit more than that. Okay. Um, yeah, I have. All right. Uh, have you ever asked her to uh, pay rent? I haven't asked her to pay rent. No, I did not. However, okay. I did ask her to help in the house and then I use whatever money she helps with for what, whatever um, utilities I need or the, the and house. has Sherry lived with you all 19 years? She has lived with me all 19 years. So um, have you ever thought Sherry just out of gratitude since you're now working to help your mom out a little more? I mean she has raised you. Had, have you ever had to pay for anything yourself? Oh absolutely. I help her all the time. Like I help her with the utilities but I also pay for all my own things. It's not like I'm asking her for money at any point. I never had allowance. I mean, technically, you're 18, and you have. You yeah, know. and I've, I've started to give her more over the years. Like, before, when I was in high school, when this all was happening, it was different because it was, like, part-time work. So now I'm working full-time, so I do give her more now. Okay. Yeah. All right, so she gives you more than just the electricity and... Uh... From time to time, she started to give me a little bit more. Okay. Yeah. All right. So then what happened, Sherry? So this was during 2020, and I was a high school senior. And at the time, just I was really excited for the prom. And I had a lot of things going on for me. Like I was working part time. And then if I wasn't working, I was at school. If I wasn't at school, I was helping out with my baby brother. Mm -hmm. So it was just a lot going on, especially for someone 17 years old. Then I had this money saved away so I could have a good prom. Once I had the money, thousand dollars you had saved, or was yeah, it less? Yeah, so I had a thousand saved on my own, and then my grandma for Christmas gave me a thousand because she really wanted me to have something nice for myself. Then when this all was coming about, it was in January, and she said she was behind on rent. And I said to her, I was like, Yeah, I really, I will help you out, but I would like to get this money back. Like, I need this as a loan. I can't just give you this money, right? Because like it was the principal, but also like it was a gift, right? And so she said, Yes, of what course. What do you mean? Uh, it was a principal and a gift. Like for me, it was my savings, and then also it was a gift from my grandma. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Okay, yes. So, so I I wished for the money to come back. So I was like, you have to have it as a loan. Like this is not just like a 
the full amount to you, right? And so she said, okay. And then I was like, okay, when do you think you'll be able to pay me back? Then she said it was, she was going to pay me back in April. And then when, it was uh, 2020 at the time, so then COVID hit in March. So then she said that she lost her jobs and she wasn't able to pay me back right away. And I understood that because it's like, I don't want my mom to suffer, you know? Like, I don't want her to, to feel like financially obligated to me to the point where she can't even take care of anything else, you know? So then I waited and waited and now it's 2022 and she still hasn't paid me back. And I asked her to pay me back. And she said that she doesn't owe me anything. Coming up on Justice For All. Did you promise to pay her back in April? I said that around that time I would start to help her out. Help for her, her out or pay her back? I said that I would help her out. I said I would, I'm would. i going to pay you back to help out with the prom. And later. What was so bad about a party bus? Well, it's got a stripper pole. Okay. My mother didn't appreciate that. We're back with the case of Sherry Salazar, who is suing her mother, Carmen Salazar, for breach of contract. What do you have to say, Mr. Salazar, Mrs. Salazar? So, times have been rough. I'm in a financial struggle. Um, I did ask her if she can contribute to the household. I asked, I told her I'm having trouble right now, and she said, you know, I do have a prom coming up. So I told her that I would, I would help her when the prom comes up. The pandemic hit, I lost both of my jobs, um, and I couldn't, I couldn't help out with the prom that she stated she was going to have. Well, obviously there were no proms. Yeah, yeah, there was no prom, yeah. so I, I, there was nothing to help her out with. Um, however, I don't believe that the did money... You, did you promise to pay her back in April? I said that around that time I would start to help her out. Help for her, her prom. out or pay her back? I said that I would help her out. I said I would, I'm going to pay you back to help out with the prom. I see, in April. Okay. All right. Did, did you know your mom lost her two jobs during the pandemic? Yeah, I do know that. Did you that. guys struggle during that time? We did struggle, but not as much as other families did. Like, a lot of my friends went through way worse, I believe. Mm -hmm. So she did Why get Why do you think you didn't go through way worse? Had, did you have a little savings? She, I did not. She had unemployment. Mm. And she definitely got more because she was a single mom. The unemployment didn't kick in till a while. It didn't kick in right away. It kicked away. in a month after. Okay. And then also, I also work. So it wasn't like she was only alone in that. Like, I was also helping. Like, throughout the pandemic, I still worked as a fast food worker. Mm. So my hours just went up more. Mm -hmm. So I was contributing to help her out. So really after almost two years or a little bit more you you still are asking your mother for two thousand dollars back yes i i do understand her struggle and it's not like i i want to sue her but at the same time she does have a lot of gambling issues like she does get a lot of lottery tickets and then after a while i'm wondering like where is my money going because she's constantly struggling with this money and it's now two years after she has two full-time jobs and true? yet she still can't no, pay for anything i yes i did gamble a lot before judge I did but I don't gamble anymore I keep it very limited I only gamble once a week and that's it um, I, I, I I'm still paying all the bills I she's still living under my roof I pay for the rent I pay for everything and she's still complaining I think she should be more grateful that I'm paying for everything and she should contribute to the household does oh. she still pay for the electricity and the water yes she I still do still helps out yeah but so you, even despite you gambling, what do you mean by gambling? What is it that you I do? buy lottery tickets, and I used to buy a big amount, but it's went down to just buying lottery tickets once a week. So that should be no excuse. And I think that the real reason that she needs the money is so she can move out with her boyfriend. Okay. Well, that's her prerogative, right? Whatever she wants to do. Yeah. Um, so, you know, absent a written contract, I have to figure out if this was a loan or a... Um, an actual contract. I mean, you know, an agreement, I should say. She says that she let you borrow this money. You acknowledged that you would pay her back in April. So I, I'm... And I couldn't pay her back in April. I couldn't I pay her back. It, it was really difficult. How many really times did she ask you for the money back after? Maybe I'd say around a couple times. Okay. 
So you knew you kind of had to pay this money back? Mm -hmm. I knew that at some point I would have to help her back, especially because she wanted to go to her prom. And I understood that as a mom, I want the best for my child. Yeah. I want her to go to prom. I mean, and I pay all the household expenses. I understand. She, she needs to contribute. I even paid, you know, she's saying that I owe her this $2,000, but I pay for everything, including like, tutoring classes so she can get and she could do well so she can go to college. I never asked for those tutoring classes. That's the thing, though. It's not like That's, I needed it to pass. You just have to be really careful what you say because it's borderline ungrateful. She, gets, she, gets, she has given you everything you've ever wanted. Plus, yes, she struggled, but she's asked you to help, and you did that because you thought, okay, I'm going to help my mom. But then to turn around after two years, really, and just sue her for $2,000? because you wanted to go to a prom and you never got to go to a prom because the worst pandemic happened, mm -hmm. that doesn't sit right with me. But unfortunately, Mrs. Salazar, she said she was gonna let you borrow this and by your words and your actions, you have admitted to me that you knew you had to pay this back. The deal you had between you two, you've acknowledged. I would, I would like to, to find that it was just a, a gift, but she's very adamant about it and you've acknowledged that. So based on the evidence, I will have to say that there was a verbal agreement that your daughter will let you borrow $2,000 and that you were going to pay it back. Um, that's what I have to recognize in the courtroom, okay? So based on the evidence, I will grant your claim of $2,000. All rise. Judge Perez has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $2,000. I am grateful that the judge saw my evidence and that I will now have that money to move forward with my life. I'm not happy about this decision, but I hope that we can reconcile our relationship as she is my daughter and I do want the best for her. Coming up on Justice For All. It pulls up. It's a nice looking black type of luxury type of bus. I said this will be great. Open up the doors. It's a party bus. Not what I had in mind. Closed captioning provided by Mark Worthy is suing Mel Jackson in the amount of $1,041. Mr. Worthy claims he needed transportation for 16 people to attend his father's funeral and says Mr. Jackson provided a party bus with a stripper pole and bar. Okay, Mr. Worthy, uh, you are suing Mr. Jackson, who's the owner of a limo company, for $1,041, correct? Correct, Your Honor. All right, and you are saying you want the full service back because he did not deliver what he promised? That is correct. All right, please explain. Okay, the situation is my father passed away from a lengthy battle of diabetes. I'm so sorry to hear it's that. Very uh, tragic and very mostly draining for our family. I'm the head of our family, so I was responsible for arranging the funeral. Situation is we had a limo for six people here in Raleigh. Limo, so that was a contract. The limo so for six that would fit six people. Yes. Okay. But then we got a notification from our relatives they could attend the funeral. We had about, you know, sixteen total now. Oh wow. So one limo can't hold sixteen people. Absolutely not. So this is the night before? This is the night before. It was kinda of late. I'll, okay. I'll admit that. But we thought we had a good situation with Mel here and that mm -hmm. we thought it would work out fine. I contacted him, said we need some type of larger type vehicle, maybe multiple vehicles. He said he couldn't accommodate us due to his business constrictions with the seasonal work and mm -hmm. all this. I'm a businessman, I understand that. So we said, well, we can get you a discount with a 20-seater, uh, a, a bus, I assume. Mm -hmm. It pulls up, it's a nice looking black type of luxury type of bus. I said, this will be great. Open up the doors. It's a party bus. Not what I had in mind. Coming up. You were just trying to help him out. I'm just trying to help him out. I'm, I'm going above and beyond. I didn't think that would be an, a big issue. We're back with the case of Mark Worthy, who is suing Mel Jackson for negligence. So what, what was so bad about a party bus? Well, it's got a stripper pole. Okay. My mother didn't appreciate that. Okay. They are Christians. They felt offended by that. They thought it was mm -hmm. disrespectful to my father's memory. Mm -hmm. Totally inappropriate. Uh, there's a bar with alcohol in it. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, one of my relatives is a recovering alcoholic. And yes, there were accommodations for 20 people with their bench type seating around okay. the perimeter of the bus. Okay. Yes. I had the idea we had individual seating with safety belts. That's the other issue is a safety aspect. So then at that moment that you saw this party bus, did you tell Mr. Jackson, this is not what I wanted? I did call him and I said, this is not what we agreed upon. If you would have told me it was a party bus, mm -hmm. I would have looked into other forms of transportation. Okay. Since I already had an open account, he said you could accommodate it. Or... Okay, so Mr. Jackson, what was going on when he called you the night before, late at night, said I need something bigger than the six passenger limo? What did you do? Okay, first of all, I would like to say I'm sympathetic about your situation. Appreciate that. Okay, and I'll tell you, I like, I'm a businessman, so I like to accommodate and make people happy. Okay. Okay, so he gave me a call that evening, that Friday evening. It's the first weekend of June. Very busy for me. So he told me about the situation. He needed more transportation. I didn't have it. I asked him, how many people are you sitting? He told me six people, mm -hmm. 16 people, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. I told him I had a transportation for 20, and I provided that for him. Mm -hmm. So I Did don't... you feel it was important to tell him about the party bus, that it was a party bus, or no? I didn't re give that information. You were just trying to help him out later. Just trying to help him out. I'm going above and beyond. I didn't think that would be an, a big issue. Okay. Judge Perez's verdict when justice for all returns. So, well, what's the problem? Because at the end of the day, Mr. Worthy, you contracted Mr. Jackson for a limo of six people. You modified the contract at the very, very, very last minute, right? Which is a huge risk. You agreed to the bus, you didn't ask any more questions, you just saw 20 people transportation, you agree to it without any conditions or limitations. So he then returned the favor and accepted that it's okay, fine, you're gonna get, you're, you will get the bus. So you changed the contract without asking for any specific terms or conditions, so why should we put you in a better position than Mr. Jackson? So based on the evidence, I find that there was a contract for services to drive. The initial contract was for a car to drive, six people to a funeral. Mr. Worthy, at the 11th hour, modified the contract. You actually accepted that new offer. Yes. You delivered what he asked for. No terms or conditions were set. Mr. Jackson delivered a bus that would take 20 people. Contract done, end of story, that's it. So based on that evidence, I find a valid agreement between you two and I will deny your claim for $1,041. Good Thank luck you. to you both. Judge Perez has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim has been denied. I provided a service. He asked for it to get to his destination, and we did that, and I agreed with the judge. What the judge would let me say was, there's a safety issue. My mother was injured. 